Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to Let's Talk Internet Security and Privacy. These Let's Talk series are going to be a series of talks about things that aren't really related to gaming, but have an effect on gamers. And internet security and privacy is definitely one of those things, because of course, we are on the internet all the time, we're playing a lot of internet games, and man, when I used to be like a high level World of Warcraft raider, I can't tell you like every freaking week we would log into raid and someone had their account hacked their characters gear just stripped and sold their characters deleted it was horrible we don't want to go through that and now there's more and more real money thing if you get into hearthstone you're gonna be spending money on cards and all this listen we don't want to get our accounts hacked we don't get want to get our email or banking or anything like that going on so we're going to look at a few different topics today uh, that all work together to make our browsing safer so the very first thing we're going to talk about is something called HTTPS Everywhere, which is the, oh God, this is the most no-brainer thing. Everyone should do this. There's no excuse not to do this. So what's the deal? When you go on the internet you uh, and you access a website, there's a lot of computers involved in between. Between your computer, your internet service provider, some random place on the internet, the uh, hosting provider of the website you're going to, and then the website itself, there are a lot of little pit stops. And it is so trivial easy. I worked in network security for a while. It is so easy for someone at any one of those those places who is you know is a summer intern or something like that to just put a trace on the internet traffic and capture all of it all of it all of it they can see everything it's it's unbelievably easy it's it's actually kind of scary to think about so don't think about it too much and one of the easy ways to do that is get something called HTTPS everywhere now what this does HTTPS is a uh, you'll see this when you go to websites you'll see the website name in the address bar will either just say HTTP or it might not say that anymore on modern browsers they've just sort of chopped that off or it'll say HTTPS when you're doing a website through HTTPS that is the secure version of the internet or the web protocol. It's the encrypted version. So when you use that version, people can still see where you go, but they can't see what you do on those websites. They don't see what pages you access, if you're transmitting password information or filling out forms back and forth. Random people between you and the service that you're going to can't read what's going on. And this thing is provided by something called the EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation. These are a brilliant, beautiful nonprofit organization that are, they basically exist to predict protect digital rights and privacy online. They're a fantastic organization. The base EFF.org is based in the US, but there are uh, international copies of this organization all over the place, and they're all working towards the same thing, which is to make the internet freer and safer at the same time. You know, protect privacy while also not, you know, letting government intrude on things. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Now, that will only take us so far because HTTPS only covers websites and it only covers websites that actually have an encrypted version so what it does when you have this plugin when you go to a website it first test to see hey does this website have an HTTPS version if so it's going to use that if not then it'll fall back to the normal stuff you'll install this plugin you won't even know it exists but at the same time it's protecting your privacy in a really beautiful way now that only takes us so far for the next thing we need to go into VPN all right, so what's a VPN? Well, I already mentioned that when you go online, you uh, you connect to your internet service provider, your internet service provider connects to another ISP and another ISP and another ISP and finally gets to the website hosting company and then the website itself. And again, all those steps along the way are wide open to people snooping. Now, this is not so bad when you're at home because your ISP is, you know, it's big and who cares about you, right? The real sketchy part, and a lot of times they have really good privacy. Uh, and security. The real scary part is when you're on the road. If you go to a hotel or if you're at work, a lot of places, you might not know this, most workplaces have huge monitoring of the internet. Anything you do online when at work, you've got to assume that someone knows what you're doing and might have a complete trace of everything you're doing from start to finish. And uh, that can be a little bit scary. Now, HTTPS, as I said, only takes us so far. It only does websites. It only does websites that have a secure version. With a VPN, what happens is you, instead of going just plainly through the internet normally. First, you make a pit stop. There's some other server out there, your VPN server, your traffic goes to it first. And the traffic that goes between you and the VPN server happens in a specialized tunnel that is encrypted. One day I'll make a video about encryption because it's a brilliant and beautiful topic. But all your traffic will go through this one tunnel and no one between you and the VPN will be able to have any idea what the hell's going on in there. And then after that, it will leave the VPN server and go to the normal web website, then come back to the website through the VPN server, and then back through your encrypted tunnel. Everything you do, it'll be totally secure. And the bonus of doing this is that it doesn't just cover the web. You can route all kinds of different kinds of traffic through there, um, depending on what service you use. 
So I, uh, I've been using Hotspot Shield. It's one of the ones I have experience with, and they have a great little service set up, and uh, it will let you do all this and really protect you. Again, you know, maybe when you're at home, it's not as important to do the security service, although there are certain fringe benefits. For example, because as far as the other websites are concerned, the traffic is not coming from you. It's coming from this VPN server. And where is this VPN server located? Well, I don't know. There's a few interesting, funny things on the internet. Some places do care where you come from. For example, if you, like me, are signed up for Netflix, I am signed up for Netflix, and I'm a Canadian, so when I go into to Netflix, it shows me the Canadian version of Netflix. But the funny thing is, Netflix account, you just have a Netflix account. It doesn't actually care where you sign up, you're just a Netflix customer. Because of all kinds of various international finagling, uh, Netflix can only show you certain shows in Canada, for example. It's great, there's great Canadian content, and there's great international content. I got stuff from the BBC, I got American TV shows, this and that. But every now and again, I run into a TV show that's not there, which is really bizarre. But if I happen to be going through my VPN, which is located in the United States, for example, then Netflix doesn't think I'm Canadian anymore. They think I'm American all of a sudden, and then they show me the American Netflix. And what's really cool about having a VPN like this is you can switch it on and off, and then you really get a pretty crazy collection of TV shows. Uh, same thing happens on YouTube and Hulu and all kinds of different stuff like that. There's all kinds of funny weirdness there. Also, um, some VPNs, for example, Hotspot Shield, do offer additional malware protection services where they will scan to make sure that uh, there's no crazy viruses coming in and downloads and, and different things like that. So there's a whole slew of features being provided there. But the big thing for me is when you're on the road. And this is not just for your computer. They do have the plug-in for both um, PC and Mac computers, but they also have versions for iOS and Android, uh, which is really handy. So when I'm on the road, if I go to a hotel or something like that, I can plug into my VPN. Uh, even with my phone and feel secure because that's the thing even though sort of anywhere along the road along the internet people can sort of break in and listen onto your conversation which is maybe more of a government concern than anything else the real threat is from these like yeah these summer interns working at a hotel or your workplace or something like that that's where it's actually going to happen where people are going to snoop in on your conversation and who wants that no there's plenty of stuff i do online that i don't want people to know about and I forgot to mention that Hotspot Shield, for example, has two versions. They have a free version. Now, it is ad-supported, so when you surf, there will be extra ads uh, inserted in there. Um, but, you know, hey, it's still free, which is pretty good. They also have a premium version that you can pay for, and then it strips out all the ads. It's not very expensive. You pay once, you get it for the entire year. Uh, and it certainly seems like a good service. When I checked out Hotspot Shield, I did notice that they were very highly rated on many, many different websites. Uh, they've been talked about in a lot of press things, so which is good, because, of course, you want to be able to trust your VPN, because you're going to be sending all all your uh, all your stuff through them so you want it to be uh, you want it to be something you can trust and they seem to be a pretty big business that's been on the up and up for quite some time so um, yeah VPNs very cool now no amount of encryption is gonna save you if your password sucks so let me give you a little story you watch me and you may have heard I have a website towerdive.com where you can go and occasionally read some of my blog posts and we've also got a forum where you can chit chat with other people I'm not as active on there as I am on uh, Twitter Follow me at, at Quill18, but you know, there's still occasionally some stuff. So you might want to go, you might want to sign up for the forums, which is great. So you put in your username, you put in uh, your email address, and you put in a password. Now, here's the thing. How do you know that me or the people who run the website are reputable, trustworthy people? The password you put in there, do you use that password on any other website? Well, if so, hey, hey, you're screwed, right? Especially if you happen to use the same password as maybe you use for email. And a lot of people do use the same password for everything. Well, now I have your email address, your, pa your username, and your password. I can basically get into all your stuff all over the place. So really what you have to do is use a separate password on every single goddamn website on the internet. And obviously that is a very hard thing to do. Some people will use like multiple passwords. So they'll have the password they use for like generic websites they don't necessarily trust. And they'll have a password they use for like super secure websites that are like banking and they don't try to mix the two up. But even then, that's really far from a perfect system. So what you want to do is use a password manager that allows you to more easily use a separate password on every single website that you use. I personally have been using LastPass forever. Uh, I know there's a bunch more other password managers out there. I think KeePass is another relatively popular one. I'm not as familiar with it. But they all basically provide the same role. You use one password to access your password manager. You don't use that password anywhere else. And then the password manager, you, you can use it to manage 
a individual password to every website. And usually these services will also include password generators. So you don't even know necessarily what the passwords are yourself. It just generates like a 16 digit long password with numbers and uppercase and lowercase letters and all these things, none of which are based on a word. So, and then you just, you forget about it. You're like, I don't care what the password is. I can just use the password manager to maintain it. So the way LastPass works is you sign up for it. And uh, generally speaking, you download the plugin for your for your web browser and usually when you first run the plugin or it's it's not even a plugin it's a program that installs plugins and the program will go and go into your internet explorer your chrome your firefox and grab all the usernames and passwords out of that and load it into the main central system so now it knows what your passwords are so you can start to use the password manager and the other thing it will do is it will say listen these passwords that you had in chrome and firefox and internet explorer they were not stored encrypted i mean they can't be right the, the chrome needs to know what your actual plain text password is so it can import it in input it into the website. So these are all in incredibly insecure. Imagine the situation where you get your laptop stolen. Now everyone's got all your passwords in there. So what it will do is it will offer to wipe the passwords out of your web browsers and also just stop the built-in web browser password manager from running at all, which is a good idea if you're using something like LastPass. And then last, the way LastPass works is you need to enter your password into LastPass to access your password. So even if someone stole your laptop, they wouldn't be able to get into LastPass and use that. All your passwords are stored and encrypted. They are stored on a server, but they're stored in such an encrypted way that if you happen to actually lose your actual LastPass password, you're kind of sort of maybe screwed. Um, there's a few different ways you can get around that. They've got these one-time keys and all kinds of really brilliant features. Uh, they, they are truly and properly aware of security. And if you don't think that security leaks aren't a problem, I mean, the PlayStation Network got hacked into. The Adobe uh, Network, so anyone who's ever bought, like, Photoshop uh, got hacked into. So all those usernames and passwords and credit card information are all vulnerable out there. Uh, and so that's why something like LastPass is really important. Uh, if you happen to be on someone else's computer and you don't have uh, the LastPass plugin installed there, that's fine. You can still just go directly to their website, log in, and get your password out of there. Uh, they, uh, they, the, the LastPass is free. They do have a premium service that adds a few extra features. The biggest feature that is added on the premium feature, which is only something like a buck a month, it's very inexpensive, is um, an iPhone, or rather an iOS and Android client. So that way, when you're you know, out and about, you can still use, you, you've got your passwords right there in your handheld device. And that's the only thing that's not free. I think this comes with like a one month trial of the, uh, the, the mobile device um, version of LastPass. But other than that, uh, it is totally free uh, other than that. And, and you can still access your LastPass website through Safari or whatever on your iPhone. It's just way more convenient to use the tool. And frankly, if you use the tool as much as I do, uh, you'll probably be inclined to pay for it. Although I haven't yet. I've been using it for over a year and I'm just totally happy with the free service. So anyway, that is password security in a nutshell. But there is yet another level of password security, and that is something called an authenticator. I, I guess a third factor passwords. Normally, most password, most website access is something called two-factor authentication. There's a username and a password. Well, if you are a fan of Blizzard products, if you play World of Warcraft or Starcraft or Diablo or Hearthstone, and you're worried about your stuff getting broken into there, because there, there's an actual cost. I mean, some things you don't necessarily care if someone gets into. But, I mean, imagine someone wiping your characters in World of Warcraft or stealing. I mean, you paid real money for your Hearthstone cards and someone breaks in and steals all that stuff. I highly recommend you grab an authenticator from Blizzard. They sell these things at cost because they don't want to bother with all the tech support bullshit of someone emailing them saying, oh my God, someone hacked into my account. Can you do a rollback? That costs them a lot of time and a lot of money. Uh, so they'd much rather give these authenticators away. I think they're $6.50. Uh, and the way they work is you, you link them to your account, and then when you try to log in, you put in your username and password, and they will ask you to push the button in front of the authenticator. The authenticator will give you a six-digit code. You punch that code in. It's different every time, and it means that even if someone had your username and password, they could not break into your Battle.net account to steal your stuff. Uh, if you don't want the physical device, you can also get the mobile version of the Authenticator on both iOS and Android, and it actually works perfectly keen and peachy as well. So either you've got to keep track of your phone, or you got to keep track of this Authenticator. I use it as my keychain, and uh, it works totally fine. And I've been very, very happy with that, so uh, it's a great little service to pick up, and I wish more things would do it. I wish uh, League of Legends would do it, for example, because that's another place that that's really vulnerable to uh, people getting their accounts stolen. And I would love to have a proper authenticator kind of service for that. On the other hand, I can imagine a future where you've got to keep like 30 of these things around. Uh, and that is slightly less good. So I'm not sure what the long-term uh, password management solution is going to be, but these are all pretty good in the short term. Finally, the very last thing I want to talk about is not as related to security and privacy, but I don't really want to make a dedicated video as to backup systems. It is it is said in the IT world, there's two kinds of people. 
people who make regular backups, and people who have just not yet had a hard, hard drive crash on them. It is inevitable at some point the technology will fail, you will lose data, and then the question is, how can you help to prevent that sort of thing from happening? The simplest solution is probably to get an external USB drive and setting up, you know, and copying stuff over to it. And sometimes these drives actually come with backup software as is that will automatically make copies to the USB drive. And that works pretty fine. I like to use, I, frankly, I use that. I, I'm a belt and suspenders kind of guy. I don't just trust one backup system. And that's why I've been using Carbonite for the last two years. Now, uh, Carbonite is not free and it's not the cheapest thing in the world. It's about 60 bucks a year to pay for it. And the way it works, you install it on your computer and then what it does is it grabs all your files and uploads them to the Carbonite server. Now, if you've got a lot of files, it can take a long time to get that done and it uploads it very slowly. It doesn't generally impact your bandwidth. Uh, it, it's pretty lightweight. You probably won't even notice that it's there. And you know, over the course of a week or so, it'll get all your files up online and they're encrypted secure servers. And uh, the advantage to that is that just happens automatically. If you make a change to a file, well, it detects that and then it uploads it after that. So there's this online copy of all your files that are always kept up to date and are great. There is no limit to the amount of space. Uh, it's unlimited gigabytes of storage they will hold on for you, which is the reason I decided to go with them. Uh, there's a few other online backup solutions, but most of them you have to pay based on the amount of space that you want to use. And I use a lot of space. I have a lot of pictures, a lot of music, uh, some videos, although I don't usually back up the videos because uh, they're really big and take a really long time. And usually, like my YouTube videos, I don't need to back them up because they're online and then I'm just done with them, right? But uh, it's a great service. In fact, after I signed up for the service originally two years ago, two weeks after I signed up, one of my car hard drives just just died completely. Like uh, the, the actual hardware itself just died. I had to throw out the hard drive and install a new one. And uh, if I had lost all my stuff, I, I would have been a little bit angry. And so anyway, I, I always tell people about this service. They don't, they don't pay me to talk about them. I just think they're, they're fantastic. They've worked really well for me. They've got a few different tiers of service. Uh, the more expensive ones, like some of them, they'll actually like just burn all your stuff onto a hard drive and mail it to you, which is still, you know, the, the best bandwidth does not come from fiber optics. The best bandwidth in the world comes from a station wagon full of hard drives. And uh, that will never change. Uh, the, the latency sucks, but the bandwidth is fantastic. And so it's actually a really fast way to recover your system. Plus they've got business accounts and all kinds of different things. But I just use the basic home account and it's worked beautifully and wonderfully for me. And uh, I'm quite happy with them. Anyway, I just wanted to make a note about that because... Uh, it makes me sad when I hear that people have lost their files. Also, it's not uh, just to recover from a complete hard drive crash. It can happen where you've accidentally deleted a file and then you realize after the fact, oh no, I needed that. Well, you can go to Carbonite and pull out individual files and that works fine too. So uh, that is it for my let's talk about internet security. I want to do some more let's talks in the future. So if you've got a good idea for a topic to just babble on about, let me know in the comments down below. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.